Hi beauties, today I am very excited. I I debated really hard whether I was gonna pick this palette up or not. I opted to because it has incredible reviews and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I did do, I did go ahead and get the Urban Decay Stoned Palette. If you guys haven't seen this, it is mainly a glitter pigmented sh um, eyeshadow palette. It comes with uh, 12 shades. It's just gorgeous. Like, oh my God, I love, I love textured palettes, even though they're a pain to store. I just absolutely love the way this looks and it's so beautiful. And then inside, absolutely gorgeous inside. You can see that it does come with four matte shades, which I was, I was kind of pleasantly surprised with. Looking at it online, I wasn't sure if it was gonna come with any besides these two. I couldn't tell if these had like a slight reflectiveness to it or not. They do not. So it does come with four of, um, of our 12 shades are going to be matte, which is nice. But just to be safe, I did go ahead and I grabbed the uh, Colored Rain little mini palette, which I think I got in an Ipsy a couple months ago, an Ipsy Plus, I think. Um, but it's got some really nice, pretty neutral matte shades that I thought we might be able to use if I needed them. And the whole thing with this palette is, I believe, let me double check. Yes, it was made with genuine tourmaline to block bad vibes and take your look higher. So it is supposed to have like actual gemstone aspects, elements in it. I like that. I'm a big fan of that. My mom really loves natural gemstones. So she, I, I can't believe that, well, I can't believe she hasn't picked it up. She's not a huge glitter person. So that's probably why, but I, I just, it's kind of like right up her, her alley. But yeah, I had to, I had to go for it. I did, we did a haul video about this. And in that I talked about, I did actually use points for this. So I, uh, I only paid 54 cents for that entire haul. This is a $54 palette though. So that's kind of why I was like, I don't know. We're trying so hard not to spend money right now because of the house and we got to buy all that furniture and all that craziness. But whatever. I will say in the same haul, uh, because of 21 days of beauty, I picked up five of these Boing Benefit uh, Cakeless Concealers in the shade number three. I had thought that I had used this particular concealer in the past. It was actually in the same collection, but it was a different one. It was a pot concealer. And I, I don't know, like one of the little pans. I don't know why I was thinking that this was the one I used, but I had not used it. So I used it today just to see. It's better than Shape Tape. I I don't, I don't regret, I'm not taking that back. I stand by that. This is like the best concealer I've ever used. It blended out so nicely. It was such a good color match for me. I, I love everything about it. I bought five of them so I could get a free gift because they were on sale for $11. I had to spend $45. So of course buying four meant it was gonna be 44. So I bought five. If I had realized how great this concealer was, I probably would have gone back and bought another five before the sale was over. Um, that is, it's not a lie. I have a problem. You guys know I buy in bulk with these things that I love when they're on sale. Absolutely the best thing that I got from the 21 days sale. I, I'm in love with it. Highly recommend. Uh, and it looks like a pencil. It looks like a little eraser. Precious. I did want to say that before this video because I won't, I probably won't talk about it on camera just because like doing concealer for you guys is kind of like, okay. And then I'm also going to, just to throw this out there, I haven't used these Mana Qatar, uh, Qatar uh, Beauty brushes that I got in my Glow Addict a couple months ago yet, but I'm completely out of clean brushes and I am not washing them. So I just keep pulling out ones that I haven't opened yet and handling it that way because that's the whole vibe of 2020. All right, let's jump into this. Today, to get us in the Halloween spirit, what am I gonna talk about? I'm going to talk about some of my favorite horror movies. I was trying to think about something to talk about and at first I was thinking like, oh, let's talk about like my favorite TV shows, which I probably will still do because there's, I mean, there's a lot I can talk about with that too because I really am more of a TV person. Um, than a movie person. I just like, when I'm looking for something to watch, I always, Nikki knows that he wants to watch movies and I'm always like, let's start a show or let's watch a show. Or, and he's kind of like, okay. And I always win because I'm in control, so. So yes, horror movies. There's a lot that I like. There's a lot, and now don't get me wrong. Every horror movie is not great. Like there's all, all horror movies all have like weird things and crazy things that happen that are unbelievable in all of them. But there are some that I love despite their flaws. Really quickly before we jump into the prime. What I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna do this as the base. We're gonna do this as the blending. We're gonna do this as the brow blending. And then I'm gonna do a cut crease. And because I'm wearing a green shirt today, I think I'm actually gonna go in with Jade. I think I might do a touch of Tiger's Eye, just with the gold, just to make it kind of like, I don't, I don't know, just cause I want to, I don't know. And if I don't do that, I may actually use Opal, 
Aura because it's kind of like the whitest shade. It's got like a touch of blue in there. So I, I, I feel like it may not work well with that, but I don't know. Or it might look great. Who knows? I don't know. We're going with Hexed, which is, it's that one, Hexed. Yeah, I can read. Yeah. Okay, so if I had to pick my favorite horror movie of all time, horror movie franchise, horror movie franchise. There's a couple I really like. I have to say it's probably the Halloween franchise. I know it's not good. It's not good. Nobody's gonna say it's good. There's so much like cheesy stuff that happens, so much unbelievable stuff that happens. The first movie only like three people are actually killed. So it's actually kind of just slow, but I, I just love Michael Myers. I love the whole, I love his whole vibe. I don't know why I'm, I'm so about it. I also am aware that the franchise just completely neglects storylines all the time. <laughs> like they'll make a movie and they're like, this happens. And then they'll make another movie and like completely negate everything that happened in the movie lead, like leading up to it. Also, we'll talk about the third movie, which had nothing to do with Michael Myers. That is the only one that is not included in this discussion. I hate that movie. I watched it and I remember watching it for the first time. And if you guys haven't seen the third, don't. It's a waste of time, don't watch it. But I remember watching it for the first time. I think I was like 13 or 14, which is when I started getting into horror. My mom tried really hard to keep me out of it, but I was always like, I wanna watch scary stuff. And so I'd be like, can we watch this? Can we watch this? And I remember like when I was, I think 11 or 12, my parents like, <sighs> this is how long ago it was. My parents took us to Blockbuster when Blockbuster still existed and they let us pick out uh, two horror movies. We got Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, we got three horror movies. Cause we got two Nightmare on Elm Street and then we got a Friday the 13th. And we got like Friday the 13th 8, which is Jason in Manhattan, which is, it's awful, but it's so entertaining. Bradley, who is my little brother, he, if I was like 11 or 12, he was like eight or nine. And the whole thing was my dad had to watch them with us. And my dad doesn't like horror, but he was like, I'll watch it with you. And then if like really feel like really bad stuff is happening or coming on, then I'll turn it off or I'll make you close your eyes or whatever. I don't know why that logic was the logic for him, but I guess it was, I guess it was like, like he was like a support system. It was, it was nice. It was a good intention. So that was the first time we watched horror movies. And let me tell you, Nightmare on Elm Street is trash. I enjoy them for the like sheer, the fact that they're so cringeworthy and so easy to make fun of. But like at the time that that messed me up. The concept of it is terrifying. It's not well executed, which is why I think people can handle it. But it's like the concept of somebody killing you in your dreams really messed with me like a lot. That's just a little bit of backstory about my me getting into and the age I kind of was when I started watching horror movies. So during Halloween, of course, AMC is really good about playing horror movies nonstop. And that was how I first saw Halloween. And I'm not gonna lie, the first time I watched Halloween, I was kind of like underwhelmed because it just, there isn't like that gore. Like everybody's talked about, oh, Halloween is this big horror movie. And, and I remember my mom, that was one of those, when I was really little, we had turned on AMC on Halloween. And that was the, the third, no, the fourth one. The fourth one was playing with Jamie. And the, the fourth and the fifth actually are some of my favorites with Jamie because I felt like as a child actor, she just was so, she was so good in that. So I really enjoy watching those two. Pretty much if, if I see them on TV, I'm gonna stop and watch them. That's kind of how I feel about it. It was at the end. And if, if you don't, <laughs> spoiler alert before, if you, if you haven't seen them and you don't wanna be spoiled, like, uh -huh. So the whole thing with, you know, the fourth and the fifth is she's Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter. Jamie Lee Curtis has died and she's an orphan and she's adopt been adopted by a new family. But Michael Myers is supposed to be her uncle. So she has a connection to him and like a weird connection, like a kind of like a supernatural, like a psychic connection type thing. So at the end of the movie, she winds up stabbing her stepmom or her stepmom, her adopted mom because he's overtaken her body momentarily. Well, that was the part that it was turned on and I was like really little, I was like six or seven. My mom was like, we gotta turn it off. This is so scary. So that's what I went into the original Halloween expecting and it just wasn't that. I mean, like it really is a lot of buildup and then only a couple people die. But the entire franchise, I really enjoy everything about it. Even the inconsistencies with the storylines and the things that they do that like, <laughs> like Jamie Lee Curtis is dead in the fourth and the fifth and then she comes back for like resurrection and H20 and the one that they made in 2019, which I actually loved the one that they made in 2019. I know it did not, it was completely negated every movie that happened after the first and it, it said that he wasn't her brother, which I didn't like that, but I enjoyed the movie as a whole. So I, I really do. I would say if I had to rank, 
my favorite Halloween would probably be my favorite. I don't know, it's hard. There's, I've got a couple that I really like. Also, I really got something in my eye and it is hurting and I don't, I mean, it's eyeshadow. I don't, I don't know what it is, it's eyeshadow, but I just can't find it. I don't know where it is, it's a better thing. But the color, love it, beautiful. Beautiful, absolutely love it. Really easy to apply. If I don't know if you guys can tell, my knuckles all red. I like hit my hand on the desk and I didn't think it was gonna be that bad, but apparently it like, it's really bad. It's very red in just that one area. It's, hor it's, it's horrifying actually. Okay, anyway, anyway. Now we're moving on to Antidote, which is the medium light shade. This one right up in, up in ya, yeah, up in ya. Yeah. And I'm gonna use the Mana Kadar blender brush. We're gonna see how these work. They feel nice. I mean, they feel like they're not super heavy, but the br the bristles feel really pretty. So we'll see. Okay, so now <laughs> y'all are gonna call me crazy for this one. If I had to pick my second favorite franchise of horror movies, and I am going sheerly on the fact that if I see it on TV or if I'm feeling a horror movie that I've already seen and not like trying to find a new one, these are the ones that I typically gravitate towards. My second favorite franchise is the Final Destination franchise. I freaking love those movies. Are they, they are the stupidest thing ever. But at the same time, they're brilliant. Because can you fight death? Hell no. Hell no, you can't fight death. And that's kind of a genius way to go about a movie. It's just being like, you know, who's the villain? What if there is no villain? What if it's just death? Huh? brilliant. I'm so entertained by them. I still drive on, when I see like log trucks on the interstate or in my life at any point, cause they're not just on the interstate, they go, they go everywhere, they're everywhere. I still think about the second movie and the interstate crash and, and die. I, I walk into, I won't tan. I mean, there's a lot of issues with tanning. If you tan, okay, I'm not, I'm not hating, I'm not hating. It's just not something that I would want to do. I'm fine being pale. I'm not gonna go lay in a tanning bed and cook myself for 15 minutes. I'm just not gonna do it. But after seeing the third Final Destination, there was not a chance in hell I was ever getting at a tanning bed because that shit was terrifying. Do I think it's plausible that that would ever happen? Absolutely not. Because the amount of lead up that had to, to the amount of freak accidents that had to lead up to that moment where they cooked to death in the tanning salon was a lot. But man, was it enough to be like, nah, nah, not worth it, nah, mm mm. I'll be pale, it's fine. I'll look like a ghost, it's fine. I feel like Ali Larder's career was just not as much as it should have been because I freaking loved her. She was on, she was in, what was it, House on Haunted Hill? I love that movie, I loved her in that movie. And then she's in the original two Final Destinations. And let me tell you, she, I love her. So I, I really enjoyed the Final Destinations quite a bit. The only one I wasn't like, and I don't hate it. I just didn't like the very last one they did. What was it? The Final Destination or whatever. It was okay. The one was like a bus crash or something like that. Kind of, it was kind of reminiscent of the, the highway crash. Also kind of reminiscent of the third with the roller coaster. The third is my favorite. The third is actually the first one that I saw. That is the one that where the tanning bed, bed death takes place. That is my favorite. But I like the first two. I liked. I like the fourth. The fourth was the racetrack, right? I don't know why. I always think that the fifth is the racetrack, but the fifth is the final destination. I just, in fact, I'm, I'm thinking last September, maybe it was, maybe last September, I like sat and I just binge watched all of them in a day and it was a satisfying day. I was like, I started with the third and then I went on to the fourth. I don't think I watched the final destination because I watched them on Hulu and I don't think that it was on Hulu, but I watched the third and then the fourth and then I actually went back and watched the first two because I always, for whatever reason, think, even though I love Ali Larder, I think that I don't love the first two, but I do, I really do. All right, let's check in on the makeup. So I'm actually, I, did, I have used just a touch of the colored rain palettes. I've used pretty much just these two to kind of darken up the blending shade a little bit because I feel like there's a little bit of a really big gap between the darkness of Hexed and um, the lightness of Antidote. I was hoping Antidote would be just a little more peachy and it's a little more neutral than I expected. So I added the two um, middle brown and light shades to, to, um, to darken it a little bit, but I'm really actually impressed with how much the matte shades in this palette have to offer because really when you look at it, you think that it's gonna be just a glitter shade, which Urban Decay has done that in, the, in or a girl, a, a glitter shade, a glitter palette, uh, which Urban Decay has done in the past. And some of my favorite 
glitter palettes are from Urban Decay. The Moon Dust palette is hands down one of my favorite glitter pigment. To, like when I'm looking for a glitter pigment, if I'm looking for a specific palette, I typically go for that. But yeah, I'm really impressed so far. We're gonna go in, I'm gonna use my normal blending brush. I'm gonna go in with Good Karma, which is the white shade. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and then we'll go ahead and do the cut crease and we'll start with Jade and see how Jade works. I have not decided yet if I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna use a brush. We'll see if that works, but I haven't decided if I'm gonna use the Urban Decay brush that they gave us with the palette or um, the Mana Kadar has a, a nice packing one as well that I think might work, but we'll see. I may I may start with Urban Decay and then go on to, to Mana's if, if, if I um, feel like it's necessary. Off camera, Nikki showed me the fire logs he was talking about. Holy crap, are they cool. I would not want to burn them because they are you know, like $35 and cool as crap. So, I mean, I don't really want to burn them. I just want to keep them. But man, them being on fire in a fire pit looked real badass, let me tell you. So, highly into that. I just love skulls. I really do. I don't know why. That's just, I just, I don't know. I just, it's just my aesthetic. Back to horror movies. So yeah, so um, Final Destinations, love, absolutely love, um, that franchise. Now, those are the two that I always think about. Like I, I really genuinely just, I really don't care if it has the name on it, except the, I will say the one exception. I get heated talking about this. You can disagree with me. That's fine. You're entitled to your own opinion. But the Rob Zombie remakes of the Halloween pissed me off because the whole thing with Michael Myers was he was just a killer. There was no psychological background. There was no reason for it. He just damn did it. And Rob Zombie went in there and was like, yeah, but he had a mom who he loved, who was a stripper and she dealt with shit and he dealt with shit because of it. And he loved his baby sister and his sister was mean to him. And so that's why he killed. No, no, I hated that. I hated it. Was it gory? Yeah, I don't care about the gore. I care about some of the story. And I didn't, I didn't like what they did with that. So I was not, I was very upset. I remember one of my good friends in high school and I watched the, those two together. And we literally, we sat there like, cause she was also a horror freak. And we sat there like, oh, they really went in and made a, him like relatable. I hate this. And then we just roasted it for the rest of the time. That was the only way we could get through it. We just had to like make fun of how absolutely atrocious the fact that they gave him a psychological backstory was so not a fan of that but pretty much anything else with the halloween name on it i i enjoy watching so i won't ever watch those again because they angered me so much when it comes to other movies i mean i've watched most of the classics i've watched all the nightmare on elm streets that messed me the hell up as a child but i'm not a huge fan of them i'm just i don't hate them i'll watch them but i just don't like i don't know the whole like oh freddy krueger is like a child molester and he's gonna give off a rapey vibes that it makes me real uncomfortable in not a good way. So I like, uh, I can watch it, but I don't prefer it. Friday the 13th, I do enjoy. I enjoy the fact that they got more and more ridiculous as they went on. All of them, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, the um, Child's Play, the Chucky franchise, they all like, they just stopped caring at some point and they just said, let's make this as stupid as we can. And we're just gonna have like senseless killing throughout the whole thing gratuitous nudity and stupid shit. And that's just what our brand is gonna be. And I, you know what? I watch it, so I guess that I am, I am part of the people that they cater to. But I just, I don't know. I don't have the same love for any of those franchises the way that I do with Halloween and Final Destination. Final Destination and, and Halloween really are the two that I just gravitate towards. I don't know why, I don't, I don't know what that says about me, but that is what it is. Really quickly, I started going into Jade. I'm not liking the way this brush is working. I think this brush actually might work well if I try and take Tiger's Eye, which is the gold shade, and I try and make like a little thin line that goes above it. I think this is just too too tight of a brush. I'm gonna try the Mana Kadar one, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna try my finger. It's just not, it just wasn't picking up and applying as well as I was hoping it would. So let's see, let's see. Okay, so off camera, I did use the Mana Kadar brush. I think it really did a, a much nicer job but I do wanna see if I can do a little gold line just above it. Wow, the gold is gorgeous. I mean, the green is pretty, but the gold is like, oh, phenomenal. 
But yeah, Nikki, Nikki talked about like Happy Death Day not being really like a horror movie. And I do agree with that. He said the second one was weird. I liked the second one because it went back and explained like what happened with the first one. It was definitely an interesting concept and a way to handle it, but there was no way to make a sequel where it was just gonna be the same thing. Cause that is the, that is literally the formula for most of horror movies. It's like, let's take the same general storyline and let's just tweak it slightly. I buy into it, I love it. I think it's great, but it is cheesy. And that's kind of why it makes it so jokey. And I think nowadays there's like this kind of need to do something different. And I like it when, when movies can go and do that. Let's talk about one that really like, talking about newer ones. When I think about what I like in horror, I, I normally go for the older ones. And then with new agey ones, I want something that's more of a psychological twist. Like I don't really, I think there's like a, a tendency to go towards gore and I'm just not a gore fan. Like I can handle a little bit of it, but I don't prefer like gratuitous. Like I'm not a big saw person. I think that's a terrifying concept where you take like their greatest fears and make that like, or their biggest like struggles and internal demons. And you make that like their, what takes them out in the end. Just am not into that for whatever reason. I don't know. But I really liked both the Unfriended and they were totally damn different from each other. But man, the first one, I enjoyed it. It was a new, like I liked it being on, I liked the way it was shot on like a camera. I enjoyed, I liked the storyline. I know it was, you know, people were like, oh, it's a ghost. That's kind of weird, whatever. I mean, that's, I mean, part of horror is you're suspending belief. And so if you don't believe in ghosts and you don't think that's plausible, okay, fine. I personally do believe in ghosts. I don't know if like, that would be the way they would exact revenge, but I'm not a ghost, so maybe they would, I don't know. But I enjoyed it, I thought it was entertaining, I thought they did some good stuff with it. And then they brought out the second one. And man, I didn't know the second one was even coming out, but me and my best friend, we we went and saw it. It was Dark Web, and I was like, okay, Dark Web, all right, let's, let's try this. I, that is actually what kind of got me, um, into stories about the dark web. Let me be clear, the dark web <laughs> terrifies me. There is no joke about it. I am very afraid of it. I, d I don't even like thinking or talking about it. I, d I do sometimes like listen to like my horror narrators that I follow on YouTube. I follow quite a bit of them. I enjoy listening to some of their stories of like people who have written in and talked about their experience with it and stuff like that. But damn, did that movie, that movie really unsettled me. Like on another level, I was, I left and I was like, I was putting like pieces of tape over my like webcams and stuff. I was real afraid of that. I, I genuinely was petrified after that movie. And that is, to me, that's some damn good horror right there because that really is like so realistic that you're like, oh my God, this could happen. I could actually get dark web murdered and I don't want it. I don't want that to happen. I really don't, that's terrifying. So I enjoyed, that's one of the newer ones that's been out released recently that I, um, I was really impressed with. What's happening with this palette? I am a fan. I um I definitely want to try some of the other shades as well. I think it's Oho. I'm going with that. Ojo. It's really really beautiful. It's a beautiful like blue, really really deep blue. I think that and Opal Aura could really create a gorgeous look together. But I'm a big fan of what's happening here. I just kind of went with the colors that are in my my shirt and in my headband, and I was like. You know, I think this will make a pretty pretty little combination together, but I'm really liking it. I am, I'm a big fan. I am going to off camera, do a little bit of touch up, do some mascara, and then we will circle back and we will see the final look. All right, this is the final look. I like it. I like the palette. I think it's good. I don't know how I feel about it for 50 bucks. I don't know, I don't know. I like it. I definitely like it. I think I have to try more of the colors. There is a lot to offer with the matte shade, shockingly. I say that because I really looked at it when I bought it and I was like, this is just a glitter. It's just a glitter palette. That's what it's got to offer. The, the matte shades are gorgeous and the, it lays down well. I think I really wanna see how the blue and the opal aura, this, these two work. I really wanna see how the vibes, this one works too. There's a lot more to try with it, but overall I do think it's a really beautiful palette. I think that it definitely has um, a lot to offer and I like the whole concept that it is using natural gemstones. So would I pay $54 for it again? I don't know, but do I like the palette? Yes. Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk about um, some horror movies that I enjoy watching. 
thing with Halloween coming up and everything, I was like, what should we talk about today? Let's talk about that because I definitely would call myself like a horror lover. I know we talked about a lot of basic stuff and there's a lot of people out there who like have seen everything horror out there. And so it probably is very basic considering, but I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the ones that I enjoy watching regularly. So yeah. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed us, then subscribe because we would like you to be part of our Dark Angel family. Join us. Other than that, I hope you guys are all safe and healthy. You have a wonderful day and you stay girly with a dark twist.